Well, hello. I hope you're pretty excited because we're about to do some artificial intelligence. I'm not sure like doing artificial intelligence is a thing, but we're about to use artificial intelligence in our first program, which is pretty sick. So here's the deal. P5 doesn't do artificial intelligence on its own. We need to find and load in some artificial intelligence to our project before we could do anything. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to find a P5 artificial intelligence library that we can load into our project. What you should Google is this thing called ML5. If you're wondering what ML5 stands for, that stands for machine learning for P5. Makes sense, right? You're going to press get started in the top right hand corner and you're going to scroll down and you'll see this. It says script, source, and all this stuff. Copy and paste this. All right, copy and paste that. And then once you've copied and pasted it, open up this side tab, go to your index.html, and right under this, right above where you see this like head tag with the slash right here, like on line 10, copy and paste this line, okay? What this is, is the machine learning library that we're going to use in our program, all right? So you might be wondering, like, what did I just do? Like, what's this little link? This is just like nothing. This can't be machine learning. This can't be artificial intelligence. Well, guess what? If you took this link right here, this HTTP, you copy this, right? And you put this in the web browser. I just copied it. I don't think you could see that, but I copied it in there. What you'd get back is all this text, all right? This is copyright Google. This is actually TensorFlow, whatever. I'm not going to get into it. But what we have here is actually thousands upon thousands of lines of code that we've gotten for free. And this is the artificial intelligence that we're gonna be using, all right? It's a whole library of artificial intelligence. They've done all this wonderful work for us and we get it free of charge. Google just gave it to us. It was really nice of them, right? Oh, what does this all mean? Anyway, we have just loaded this machine learning uh, library into our project. So all of that gets loaded into our project with this script tag. So now we have it, now we can actually use it. So now that we've loaded it, we're gonna go back to sketch. And what we're going to do is start by just getting ourselves an image. And I'm just going to get an image of a cat because from what I hear, machine learning does really well with cats. So I'm just going to get this beautiful little cat right here. I'm going to save this image. I'm going to save the image as cat. And right. And then I'm going to load it into my project. Nothing new here. All right. Get your image set up. So this is the image that I'm going to be using for my, my first image that I'll be using for my machine learning project. So remember, the project here is to get um, our program to guess the picture that gets loaded into it. So we're going to load into a picture and it's going to classify or guess what that is a picture of. All right, it's already been trained. We just have to give it the images. To get our artificial intelligence loaded into our project now or started up, what we're going to say is we're going to make a variable called artificial intelligence or AI, okay? And we're going to set equal to ML5, which is the machine learning library. And we're going to get this image classifier function. And we're going to use MobileNet. Now, not to get too thick into the weeds here, but all we've done is we've stored the image classification function of that machine learning library. That machine learning library does a lot of things, but one thing we're going to be using for this is image classification. Now it's stored in this variable. Okay, so AI has that functionality. It can classify images. We'll come back to that in a sec. All right, our next step is to load in our image to our model, okay? So what we're going to do is say let img, we'll just say our general image, right? Because we'll be loading in different images here. So let image, all right? And then we're going to say function preload, and we're going to preload our image in, and we're going to say image is equal to create img and we're going to load in cat.jpg and we're going to press play like that and look there's my cat and you might notice some of the more perceptive of you have seen that you get this error that shows up right here it says create image was expecting at least two arguments meaning it was expecting two things to be set into it right like kind of like how in our create canvas it gets two different things of 400 400 Create image actually accepts two things. And we've actually only been giving it one. The second thing that it accepts is this thing called a callback function. All right. And let me just be clear what that is. That is a function that only runs after the image has been loaded into the RAM. Okay. 
So create image is going to load this into the RAM and only once it's finished it loading into the RAM, run another function. So what we have to do is say this, comma, image ready. And this is the function that we're gonna run when this gets loaded into RAM. Now image ready doesn't exist. This is a function that we can create. All right, we could run any function. We could say your mom, we could say your face, we could say UP rocks, whatever you want, right? But we're just gonna say image ready is gonna be the name of our function that we're gonna run whenever cat gets loaded into RAM. Now, we should create that function and we're gonna say image ready. Oh, sorry. Underneath your draw function, let me just be super clear about this. Underneath the draw function, not inside of it, but underneath, we're gonna say function image ready. So we're making a whole new function. And in here, this is where we're going to start doing our prediction. We're gonna use our artificial intelligence to predict what this image is. So we're gonna say AI, which is remember, that's where we stored all our like machine learning uh, functionality dot predict. So we're saying, hey AI, we want you to predict something. We want you to predict what this image is. Remember, IMG is where we store the image. And after you've done that, we want you to run another callback function, meaning we're, we want you to spit out your results. So after it does all its processing and says, I think this is a really cool cat, we want you to run another function. Now we're gonna make that function called got results. Now we could have once again called this anything. We could have said like, uh, uh, image, result, sent, whatever. We call this anything. We're just gonna make another function. This is where we're gonna get our results. So we're gonna say got results, and that's gonna be our next callback function. So this is the function that's gonna run after it's made its prediction about what this image is. So we're gonna say function, got results, oops, capital R, oops. And we're gonna say error results. And close, open and close brackets. Now this is where it sends its results. So after the image has been classified, it sends its results to this function, and this is where we're gonna get it. Now we'll start doing some cool stuff here, but for a second, I just wanna get my cat looking good. So in the draw function, let's just position our cat. We'll say let, what's that? We're gonna say image dot position, and we're gonna set it at, uh, let's say 100, zero. So we're gonna move it to the right a little bit, and we're gonna say image dot size. We're gonna say it's at 200, 200. So we want it to be a little small kitty. Okay, good. That's a nice looking kitty. All right, perfect. Get what I just did there? Perfect. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got it, what will ha what's happening in our program so far? So far we have an image, we preload it. We preload our cat into the RAM. Once the, it gets loaded into RAM, this thing called image ready fires off. Image ready, then run this function with our artificial intelligence that predicts what the image is. When it gets what the image is, it sends the results to this new function called got results, which was right here. And right now it doesn't do anything, but it will do something. And that's what we're about to do. So check it out what we're about to do. Here, I wanna show you, we're gonna console.log our results. Now, you don't have to type this, I just wanna show you what the result is. So I'm gonna press play. It's gonna take a little bit to work. It's processing, it's processing, it. it's doing its machine learning. Remember, machine learning ain't easy. And sooner or later, you see this thing, object, object, object just popped up. All right, I wanna make this full screen now. And this is the this is the present right here that it just lent us. The machine learning algorithm now just sent us what it predicts. So it made three predictions here. It's made one, two, and three predictions. All right, and I wanna explain what these three predictions are. The label is the prediction that it made. It says, I think this is a tabby cat. And if you know anything about cats, that is definitely a tabby cat. And then you see the second part of that, it says it's confidence. It says 0.56. That is actually the percent sure it is. It's like I'm only 56% sure that this is a tabby cat, which is like not really confident. But remember, machine learning doesn't know anything for certain. All it's done has been trained on lots of data and it's a, it can make a guess to what it thinks it is based on all the data that it received beforehand. So it's saying I'm 56% sure that this is a tabby cat. Its next guess is an Egyptian cat which it says, I think I'm 29% sure that it's an Egyptian cat, so it's a little less sure. And three, this might be a tiger cat, which I've never heard of, and it's like 1% sure that it's a tiger cat. So that's it, all right? It's made three predictions. That's kind of cool, machine learning worked. I think it got it right, it's, it's, that is a tabby cat. Now, we wanna get those results up on the screen, all right? And the way we're gonna do that is, well, we're going to show them right here. Now, here's the deal. 
because your ultimate goal is to have five of these, um, we're going to get five results on the screen. What we want to, I mean, sorry, five different images. We want to press those buttons again and have them change what the, the what's called the image and like what shows up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make two variables just to store the text in. So I'm going to say let uh, uh, prediction text and we're going to say let confidence. All right, we're going to just create two variables to store our like those results in. In the setup, we're just going to say prediction text is equal to, well, nothing for now because it doesn't know yet. And confidence text is equal to nothing for now because it doesn't know yet. All right. And only once we get the results will we change what these variables are. But first, let's put them in the draw. Let's Because remember, we declared, we initialized, and we're just going to draw them. We're going to say text is equal to prediction text. Uh, and let's put that at, I don't know, let's do it at 75 to 20. And then we'll copy and paste that. And we'll say confidence text is equal to 75 to 40. All right. Now, nothing's going to show up on the screen because, remember, we put nothing in there. But what we want to do is we want to change these two variables uh, once it's made its prediction. All right, so what we're going to say is this. We're going to say prediction text is equal to, uh, let's see, uh, we'll say this. Uh, I think this is a, and then we'll say plus um, results zero dot label, all right? Because remember in the object, the zero object, right? And the label is tabby cat. So that's what I'm showing here. I think this is a result zero label is the tabby cat. So let's try it out. If I press play, give it a second. It's doing this prediction. It's like, what is this thing? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. It loads up and boom, I think this is a tabby cat. And I think that looks gross. So I'm actually going to move these over to 100. So that looks pretty good. Now the next part is we want to tell the confidence level as well. So we're going to say confidence text is equal to my confidence confidence level is all right and then we're going to say plus results zero dot confidence oh my gosh you can't type for anything and if you look here once again remember in each of these objects it says confidence and that's what the, it puts this thing now since this is a decimal i wanted to convert this to a a percent, so we're going to say times 100, uh, and then we're going to say plus uh, this percent sign. So you'll see if you type this out exactly as I typed it out, we should get the confidence level as well. So we go, we press play, give it time, and your machines are going to be surly slow there. This is a new Mac, so you might have to wipe quite a little bit. And then, look, I think this is a tabby cat. My confidence is 56%. Cool. So that is it for this uh, machine learning little lesson. Now your goal, of course, is to make five buttons that change what you see here, the image. We're gonna feed it a new image. And once it's got a new image, what you're going to do is change these two. Now just so you know what this should look like, it should look like something like this. Um, I can help you with your first button. You know, I'll just do the first button with you. If you want another button, here, I'm doing this because I like you. You could stop watching now if you think you got this. If you don't think you got this, here, let me make a button for you. Let's make a button at uh, 50, uh, 350, and we'll make it 50. Okay, so we should get a little button on the screen. Okay, and now our next move is to, once again, we'll like have to make our, what's it called? We're gonna say, let button one. All right, that's where we're going to store the distance. We come here, we say button one is equal to the distance between mouse X and mouse Y. Remember, we're just making a button work now. We've done this 5,000 times. And then we're going to say button one if button one is less than 25 and mouse is pressed. Then what we'd like to do is give it a new image. So you would say like image, image is equal to create cat. Sorry, that's a weird cut. I actually just loaded it into a new thing. Dog.jpg. 
and then we're also once again going to load run the callback function image ready 